Footy's back. G'day, I'm James Clement. Wait, no, I'm not the former two-time Collingwood best and fairest, nor am I James Clements, the usual host here of the AFL Today Show. I am Alex Donnelly stepping in for corporate gym while he's on holiday up in Noosa, probably getting sunburnt because he is a redhead and, you know, he has fair skin. Anyway, welcome to the, the AFL Today Show. We're here to make footy fun. It's the greatest game in the world, and that's what we're here to do. Have a great time. Joining me. It's a different crew today. This Very I don't know different. how to feel. Mix like Jim's away, so stats guys like I don't know what to do without my dad, so he's not here either. <laughs> I'm joined. Well, Leo's usually on the Thursday show, so Leo's yeah. over here. How are we feeling, Leo? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm pumped up that we've got a debutant in yeah. today. Yes, come on, let's go. Get around it. We need to do a, like those <clears> debutant <throat> videos. <laughs> One of our very own. He's been in this office for, it feels like 18 months. Feels about right. Oh, recently yeah, became a, a full-timer. Got a job upgrade recently as well. He is a long-time suffering Arsenal fan. Arsenal. Not Arsenal fan. <laughs> Arsenal. I was thinking Chelsea what? and Arsenal. I've gone off track there. But he is an Essendon fan. It is yep. Marcus Barzano. Right as Essendon. Just career into the ether of life. Yeah, look, I'm missing the drug saga days uh, right about now. So, <laughs> Jeez. Look, That's how dire You brought me on at the right time of the yeah. season, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Anyway, subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. Follow AFL Today on the socials and get around this wherever you get a podcast. So give us a five-star review. Leave us a rating. Give us a comment that you miss Stats Guy, you miss Jim. He'll be back. Not in a good mood. Carlton have lost their last couple. He'll be a bit flat right now, but can you smell it? Footy's back. Let's get in the news. (laughs) Scott Pendlebury. You may have heard of him. He plays game 400 on Saturday night. Joins Brent Boomer Harvey. Michael Tuck, Silk Burgoyne, Kevin Bartlett, and Dustin Fletcher in the 400 club. Leo, read out the honour roll. Well, I think Marcus has the oh. honour roll. <laughs> we, we've uh, we've Back called on upon me. Marcus. Yeah, we've got two-time Premiership player, 2010-2013, six-time All-Australian. Five, you said 13, 23, you mean. 23. Yep. 23. Five-time Collingwood Best and Ferris winner, six-time All-Australian, three-time Anzac Day medal winner. It's not a bad CV. And... One bounce on a pigeon. One bounce on, one a, bounce pigeon. on a pigeon. Who can forget that bounce, bounce on, a on a pigeon? All right, quick question. Does he go down as the greatest pie ever? Oh, and if not, who there. is it? I think he would. Yeah, yep. probably recency bias being young, but he's probably number one, isn't he? Yeah. If Bucks had a premiership, is it just him and Pendlebury clear second? Yeah, well, Bucks, Pendle- Norm has Smith, two, though. Yeah, but Bucks is a Norm Smith medalist, a Brownlow medalist. Yeah. He is a Norm Smith medalist as well, Pendlebury. Okay, you didn't mention that. 2010 replay, replay grand. That still counts. Does that count? That That counts. counts. Okay. (laughs) I still think it's Pendlebury. On that, he has to go ahead of Bucks. I think if Bucks has the premiership with the brown low, it goes down as him. You guys are a bit too young, but Bucks in his heyday in the early Mm. 2000s. What a man. I can't think of any... Anyone else? (laughs) No, Colin not. Coventry, figure, Nick, Nick well, Maxwell. So, like you've got Gordon Coventry back in the day, mm. but anyone could kick fifteen hundred goals back in the day. Yeah, apparently. I couldn't. Yeah, so easy. Stats guy couldn't. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> AFL broadcast two thousand and twenty-five. This was just in the news today. We know that's happening with Fox broadcasting all the games themselves independently. Yeah. Mm. But the important thing to note here is: so for the first eight to ten weeks of the AFL season in two thousand and twenty-five. You can only watch football on Saturday on Fox Footy. So you need mm. Foxtel or KO to watch that. Yeah. The important question out of this is, do you think they're going to address the overlap issue? Probably not. <laughs> Let's be honest, probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prob- probably not. It doesn't affect me too much, thankfully. Oh, kills me. But uh, I'm talking like the broadcast on yeah. Fox. So, um, yeah, we have – so F- Channel 7 owns well, – not owns, but will have Thursday night for the first 15 rounds at a minimum – Mm. Friday night and the Sunday slot, but they also have marquee Saturday night slots, so like dream time. Okay. If Anzac yeah. Eve happens to be on a Saturday night, that they still have those slots. Yeah. Gotcha. So how are we looking forward to this where for the first time ever, viewers will have a choice on what they want to watch? Yeah, look, again, I think it just it, – it's there's going to be overlap, isn't there? If, there, if there's a what, choice on what yeah. they want to watch. But this is more like, – I'm what? talking on Thursday and a Friday night, and yeah. you get a choice of which broadcast to watch. It's the first oh. time ever, so that's going to be very interesting to see. Look, I don't think it's going to be very good for the blue-collar people. I don't think they'll be very happy no. uh, about it not being on Channel 7, especially a Saturday game where you've got five games of footy, typically, but it'll be four, yeah. you'd assume, uh, with Thursday night footy coming in for a, for a long time at the start of the season. Yeah, well, Fox are trying to own that. That's why they've paid. I think it's like a billion dollars to get this Saturday themselves. So that's going to yeah. be, and it's also oh, going to be enough. interesting to see what all the callers like 
the lineup of yeah. callers. They're going to have to bring yeah. in more people because they don't have enough because obviously a lot of play, a lot of callers here overlap with radio and TV. Well, I'm, so, I'm sick of hearing uh, BT and, and Jimmy Brayshaw. Same. See, they're good on radio. Terrible on TV. Yeah. Because yeah. I actually mean, can um, actually put in a bit of personality on radio. Yeah. yeah. It might mean yeah. Matt Hill gets more of a gig for... Yeah. that. He won't do Saturdays, Fox. though. Races. Could do, could do a night. Mm-hmm. Well, he won't do Thursday night. I think he does SEN. So he might be a Friday night, Sunday type of setup, which would be great. Anyway, Big Kahuna, a.k.a. Dick Cyclone, a.k.a. Josh Tracy. (laughs) Where's the nickname Dick Cyclone come from? So Cyclone Tracy. And then um, I don't know why the name. I think it's uh, something I can't even remember. I heard it on a Perth radio show. Someone's seen him in the show. No, it's not that. (laughs) I did see someone comment um, that Tracy's Dick Cyclone on one of our videos. And I was like, what is this guy on? Yeah. Must be a thing, yeah. Yeah, might have some well, because Big Kahuna. I don't know if it has something to do with that, but yeah, Dick Cyclone because it's Cyclone Tracy. I don't know about the other part anyway. We've got to stop saying that. <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna get killed. He's re-signed a contract, 2030. Yeah, Ooh, it's a pretty big. Uh, he'll only be 28 by then too. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Come not on. a docker for life then. No, mm. so he'll be coming into free agency going. Give me that money. Mm-hmm. How good is you mentioned this before the show? Josh Tracy and Jaya Miss in the future. That is going to awesome be a deadly partnership. partnership. They're well, building something they special need, for you. They mm. need Josh Tracy. Without him, you know, you take him out of there. I reckon that that that's not that good mm. for them. Look, I think Frio could well and truly be flag winners in the next five years. I think they're cooking. If they can get Shy Bolton and or Baker and or Chad that, Warner, yeah, that mm. that could be the missing piece. I feel I feel like they got young players now with Amos and Tracy, but also in the midfield and the back line. Yep. They're just low key, just cooking. No one really talks about them, but we're talking up Flag Mantle. It's Flag Mantle. We it's Flag, get flag Mantle. Mantle by their by their real name, yeah. Flag Mantle. And finally, AFL have confirmed the grand final time. So as we expected, is as it should be. It is two thirty. Yep. How do we feel, lads? Two thirty grand final. We good? Yeah, I'm happy. Love it. Love it. Yep. The only one I wanted, if it ever changes, it better not be a night grand final. Yeah. I mm. want a four forty. Yeah, I'm Good fine evening. with that. Yeah. Just ha- having my the my most favorite game that I've ever watched and yep. been to was the qualifying final in 2022. Oh, Geelong yep. and I Collingwood. was at that too. Yeah. It was a four forty kickoff. The sun was going was, down. It that, was, was that the, the uh, it was they won they came the back on two goal. goals. Max yeah, the Max Holmes goal. goal. Gary Running Rowan into Mark. the open square. Yeah, yeah. 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 The gotcha. Gary Rowan Mark. But yeah, it was it's my most favorite game that I've been to. Yeah. Mm. I, I'd be in support of a Twilight Grand Final, but I can't argue with two thirty yeah, either. No, I can't like, yeah. I'm happy with either. Yeah. All right, let's get into some game previews. Friday night. There's a double header. So Why? I'm just gonna get this out of the way early. I hate it. I hate everything about it. Awful. But Friday night footy starts at 7.15 at Marvel Stadium as the Western Mm. Bulldogs minus 22.5 take on the Melbourne Demons with the over-under of 172.5. The Dogs' offense has been firing the last month or so. They're fourth overall, 92 points. Their defense allowing in 77. Uh, They're fourth and fourth overall in both, which that means they're in the premiership window Ah. against top six in both. What about their pressure gauge? What is that at? 277,432. I think that's (laughs) broken the gauge. Yeah. The Ds, they're not going great. Their offense, as we've said, for the last 18 months, 79 points, they're 14th. And then defense, they're still strong, 78 uh, points there in sixth. Mm, Now, the Dogs smashed Sydney last week, but they didn't kick away. So you can contain the Dogs with a strong defensive unit here, which is, you know, Jakey Lever and Stephen May. Yeah, look, five day break too for the dogs, and they threw everything at the Swans yeah. as well. So you got to add in travel. That's why I think D's are a sneaky chance in this one because yeah, five day break. Dogs, so they've won three in a row against great opposition, but the dogs of the past are just in the back of my head going, oh, "We'll just normally drop the odd game that we're meant to win." So this could be it. They went what? to Sydney yeah. and smashed the Swans. I'm I'm a believer now, which I and this is me. This is you. You hate the dogs. I hate them. <laughs> I think if this was at the G, it would be a little bit more different. Yeah, but I think the dogs have got this covered easily. So Down for some, to Marvel. Yeah. So for some changes, dogs, no changes whatsoever. Why would they? Yep. For the D's, in come Blake Howes, Tommy Sparrow, and Bolstrup. What a name. Out go Caleb Windsor, who's got a system Moses issue. Jack Billings, who's been one of the worst trades all season, and Laurie's been omitted. Mm. Yep. Adam Chalor's two fiftieth. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yep. that, that'll like. He'll have 250 touches to celebrate. <laughs> How many metres gained? Get him in the super coach. 215 metres gained. Don't start me on that. <laughs> anyway, so Melbourne have lost their last five away matches, but they've beaten the Dogs 40-plus in their last two. Of note, they have been at the MCG. One was earlier this season, and the other one was round one or two last year, I reckon. Yeah. And Jamara, though, he is the fo- he's the number one forward in the competition right now is as he, far as form. Yeah, is he the most informed player in the comp, Jamara? Forward. Just forward, yeah. Yeah, I'm going yeah. forward. I don't have to there, sit there down and think about the comp. There is a case for him though in the comp. I think yeah. so too, yeah. yeah. 
But he's kicked four straight. Four straight in his last three, not four straight goals, but four on the bounce. So it's mm. the big question, gents. Are the Western Bulldogs consistent? Define consistent. Well, they've won three in a row. They've knocked off Carlton, Geelong, and Sydney, who are one, two, and three yeah, when they've knocked them that's off. That's pretty consistent. <clears throat> well, in the past three weeks, you'd, the past month, you'd have to say they're consistent. They got yeah. smashed by Port Adelaide by about 1,000 points four But any ago. club with Luke Beveridge in charge, you got to question them. Yep. Yeah. You that, do. That's just the one thing at the back of my head. Is it the, if mm. they come out and just absolutely smoke the Ds here, you're like, okay, like, yeah, we saw them beat Sydney and Geelong, mm. which we know they can do, but this... Again, like, this is the yeah. game they drop. Is it yeah. just a Rory Lobb, Jamara Iguhagen purple patch? Yeah, I and think it's a Rory Lobb month? purple patch. Oh, God, I think yeah. Jamara, it's a coming of age. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. All right, tips. I think dogs by two goals. I think the key for this one will be the dogs start. Because of that five-day break, they're going to have very heavy legs at the end of it. So if they start well, which I think they Man, will. They got the jump mm. for three quarters last week. They should be fine. Oh, still coming back from <laughs> Sydney, five-day break. They got to jump the Ds. I think they will. Ds will bring it back a bit, but dogs yeah. will do enough. I think the dogs comfortably by 39 points. Yeah, nice. I'll be turning this one off at halftime as the Western Bulldogs will win this by 63 points. 63. They're just going to come out, absolutely jump them. That win last week was awesome. And I think the Ds threw everything they had late there and didn't, didn't yep. land the knockout yeah. punch. I think, I think they're in trouble. I think the I think the Ds will struggle to kick 70 points. Oh, yeah. yeah that's that's fair. Ds from the whole year. All right, let's get to the other game on Friday night, this kicks off at 8.30 off the stadium. Over under 168 and a half as the West Coast Eagles host Gold Coast minus 13 and a half point favourites. Mm. On offence, West, Co West Coast have only kicked about 67 points all season. And on defence, they're allowing about 100 in a game. They're 17th and 16th rank in both. Gold Coast, they're 11th in both. 89, yep. 83 points for, 83 points against. The last time Gold Coast won a game away from home, was in this game last year, which was also a double up Friday night. Mm. Now for the changes. West Coast. <clears throat> Just give me time here. <laughs> in comes Alex Withard and Liam Duggan, Jeremy McGovern, Johnson, Howell and Dewar. Out goes Tom Barras with concussion, aka I met Sam Mitchell. Uh, <laughs> Rotham Abdominal Edwards concussion. Petrocelli got suspended. Jai Cully admitted and Jack Hutchinson suspended. Gold Coast. In come Fiorini, Alex Sexton for your super coach players. Ned Moyle admitted, and Barry has been admitted. No mm. Jed Walter. Interesting. How are yeah. we feeling? I don't know how to feel. There's so many changes for West Coast. I feel like they're just throwing stuff at the stumps and seeing what sticks, to well, be honest. they haven't got a coach, so. Mm. Yeah. And to be fair, they kind of had to make a lot of changes after the, the big brawl. In fairness, there's a few injuries here, like concussion, yep. abdominal, yeah. concussion, suspension, True. dropped, suspension. Yeah, Ed Edwards, Rotham, and Barris all injured. Apart from McGovern, none of the ins are really like... Alex Withard and Duggan. Duggan are good. Duggan, yeah. Witherden's a bit too outside for my liking. So Ooh. is this the game where West Coast really pumped themselves up after it and it's like, this is the last game we think we can win all season? I think so. This is, this is They'll pump themselves game. up, but I don't think they're going to win it. I, like, I just can't. You can't tip them, can but you? But West like, Coast, have uh, Gold Coast haven't won away for over 12 months. 15 straight away matches they've lost. And here's a stat. Stats guy didn't do it. I'm going to beat you to it. <laughs> What the result is at halftime this season for Gold Coast has been the result at the end of the game. So if they're yeah, winning they're at winning. halftime, they'll win. If they're behind, they're done. Interesting. How's that for a stats, That's stats guy? Good. Yeah, he should have put that in. Yeah. Poor stats guy. I think no, no matter when you play the Eagles, no matter what sort of club status that they're in, anytime you play them off the stadium, it's always going to be a tricky game. They, I think mm, we, this year, Gold yes, Coast beat them like I think, I, I think I think that's... What's to be seen? Even Fremantle last week, yeah, they they pushed away, Derby's they kicked different. away. Derby's different. Derby's different. Oh, look, I I actually fancy the Eagles in this one. I know really? the the Suns parallel record. Oh, the twenty. We got to mention the twenty eighth yeah, parallel. That's that? the big question. Yeah. Will the twenty eighth parallel live away from home for Gold Coast, or can it be defeated? I think it's dead. I think last week killed it. So that means they're going to win. Yeah, I think they're going to win. I think they'll win this by ten goals. Yeah, mm. I think the parallel's gone. Unfortunately. Oh, you know, I'm going to back the Eagles. Big call. We'll get to more one, one of big calls later about one yeah. of the plays in the game. Yeah. But I'll go the Eagles just based off my big call. Leo, what are you tipping? I think, well, you've put Eagles under my name. That's actually thrown me off a bit. But yeah. Suns will win by yeah. about three goals, I okay. think. Okay. Easy. Moving on. Saturday, early game, 145 at Marvel Stadium. Stats guy will be there swinging his singlet around he's for got footy. sure. What a fake fan. Oh. <laughs> North Melbourne, minus six and a half point favorites. Yes, North Melbourne are favorites. As they host the Richmond Tigers. The over-under is 176 and a half. Uh, offense for North. Stats guys are putting in the Richmond stuff here. Uh, <laughs> North are kicking 70 points a game and allowing in 108. They are the second worst offense and the worst defense in the comp. Richmond, ever since Dimmer said this place sucks, 
haven't won at Marvel. Yep. They're zero five and one at Marvel in the last three mm. seasons. And the Chisel, he's probably the most informed player in the comp. Yeah, that's thirty five cool. touches in three of his last four games. Uh, for teams, let's get the teams up here as they've Dusty's just come back. through. He won't play. Uh, in goes Dusty. <laughs> in comes Dustin Martin, Nank, Jack Graham. Out goes Ryan Dow and Smith for a personal reason. Uh, for North Melbourne, Toby Pink, McKercher, Eddie Ford. Out goes Logue injured. Oh, that's not great. Wardlaw concussion. That's his second one this year. Mm. And Liam Shields are managed. <laughs> Jesus, Richmond are throwing everything. Yeah, it's with a, Dusty it's, and Nank coming in. It's a. Oh few begins for Richmond. It's like they're going for finals or something. It's like, hey, <laughs> this is our last chance. Why don't you just get the number one draft pick, Richmond? You're in the box seat. Look, well, we talked about this before, but yeah. they could do a North Melbourne on the last game of the season. Richmond play Gold Coast at, at the home, G. And they could bump up. Yep. And they can bump up yep. and blow the number one pick. But this is sort but of the, a number in one fairness, pick. In fairness, there's no Harley Reid this year. This looks a very, very even draft, yeah. which is fine. So anyway... The big question is, will either of these teams win the wooden spoon? The answer is yes. It's going to be Richmond. I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Do we have anything that we want to talk about in this game? This is one of those, like, it's the early game and there's uh, nothing. This is the only game on. Yeah. What, what about a crowd guess here? Well, I'm going. <laughs> I, I'm going to get amongst it. I'm going to be amongst the North fans. And I reckon there'll be, I reckon there'll be 26,000. Yeah, I'll, I'll go 30. Yeah. 23. 30. North, or North Melbourne fans. North fans up. actually do show they don't up. See, yeah. They don't see many wins. Yeah. And, uh, they look. still show up. It'll be 23. 23. 23. Yeah, 23. Uh, so let's get to the tips. I'm going North Melbourne by four goals. I think they've been playing, apart from the Swans game, they were due for a flat one there. They've mm. played yeah. good footy. 40 points yep. did not show how well they played last week. I mm. completely agree with that. I thought the difference in that game last week was Tom Stewart. And I think in this one, they'll win by six points. They'll clearly be the better team, but because they're so young, they won't be able to put Richmond away. I don't but think. could this just be a game where Suva kicks nine? I hope so. Because like their foot, like Richmond's defense is Noah Bolter. If it's a good day, of lost and I actually mm. hope Combin kicks it back because he looks really well, promising. He's playing, which yeah. is good. Yeah. Look, I'm going to go north by a few kicks. Um, yeah. I think they've been very good, but there's some some big ins for Richmond. This which I yeah, think will make it a bit tricky. It's still Richmond at Marvel. At Marvel, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, they stink. The ins, the ins are good, but Dusty hasn't had a great year. Nang's been pretty good, but Graham hasn't had a great year either. Will mm. Dusty get subbed off? Probably. No. I'm Probably. going yes because he's quite oh. quitting. I'm standing by that. He could, you know. So North Melbourne, a clean sweep there by the boys. Let's go down to Taxpayer Park, GMHBA Stadium. Hopefully it's fixed up after the mud bowl it was a few weeks ago. 4.35 p.m. They host the Adelaide, nay, Radelaide Crows. In for Geelong comes Reece Stanley, Zach Tui. Out goes Duncan, who's been managed. Closey has been admitted for the Crows after they got whipped last week. Ball A's admitted. Elliot Himmelberg, I'm shocked he wasn't dropped before this. Yeah. He's out. Cook admitted. Jones, personal reasons. So that means Dan Curtin stays. That's good. That's good. Hope In, he's not the sub. Mm. Some decent ins here. Murray, Crouch, Dawson, Worrell. That's some pretty good They're ins. Good ins yeah. for Adelaide. Might not make a difference. So Probably the offense not. and defense here with the Geelong being three, uh, just on three goal favorites, over under is 172 and a half. Geelong, for all their uh, just average form this year, they're 91.8 points on offense and they're letting in 84.2. Adelaide, so strikingly similar, 82.2 and 82.1 points. Mm. Yeah, look, I think this will be a pretty big win for the Cats here. Yep. yep. Yeah, I, I just think down there, and watching Adelaide last week, they were not impressive at all. But it's not the Cattery is in a fortress anymore. Weird yeah. things have been happening there this year. GWS went there and won. Port went there and won. The Dogs went there and won. Yeah, I don't know. Just, I don't, Watching Adelaide last week, their biggest threat was when they got it inside 50, their tall targets, and Geelong's defensive structure is a lot better to stop that. Well, what have you got mind. back there? You've got, Hen you've got Henry, Deconing, Stewart. Stewart. Uh, Zach Guthrie's been playing well. Lawson yep. Humphreys has been He's been two, incredible. And two he's back in there. Yeah. He's going to have about 40 off a halfback. So mark. I just, yeah, the un that's the only way Adelaide could look like scoring is if Phil Thorpe was looking dangerous. He's got to kick six. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's going to be the biggest blowout of the weekend. I think this yeah, one. Yeah, I, I agree with that one. Yep. So Geelong have won the last 13 games against the Crows down in Geelong, and Fogg has kicked two plus in 10 of his last 12. Are we at the point where we should just for text for the last couple of games, either retire him, put him on ice, and let Fogg and Thrillthorpe have a real crack at it? Yeah, you probably just give him a farewell game at the end, right? Just to sort of see him Maybe off. next showdown. Showdown. Got They got yeah. the showdown. Yeah, actually, show, yeah. Imagine a showdown farewell game. Yeah. Hell yeah. Mm. All right, answer the big question. Can Dempsey lock up the rising star here? No, because he's not going to win it. You're going to say Matty Roberts? He's going to win it. <laughs> I won't hope. <laughs> who's, your tip, who's your tip to win the Rising Star? Wardlaw. Wardlaw? Yeah. I, I said I know Dempsey concussed, in the midweek I think, show. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think body of work throughout the season, Wardlaw's been better. 
You forget Dempsey had one kick two weeks ago. Yeah. Wardlaw, well, though, well, equally he's had Dempsey. his off games. Yeah. yeah, but Dempsey's also he's pumped up by being in the better team, whereas he, yeah, that's true. he's that's doing true. a lot of work on inside midfield in a really bad team. True. Yeah, that, that's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. All right, tips. It's got to be Geelong. Yeah. Adelaide haven't won there since 2003, oh. uh, which is ridiculous. So I'm gonna go Funnily enough, Scott four. Penderbury hasn't played a game in Geelong in that long because he's never or played Tassie. there. Yes. Or Tassie. Nor Tazzy. I think I saw another mm. thing. I'll find it in yeah. a sec. Ridiculous. But I'm going to go Geelong next by game. 45 points. Oh. Yeah, I think Cat's 61. I think this will be a smashing. Mm. That's a whomping. I'm Geelong by 40-something points as well. Uh, quickly as we go in for this uh, next game, which is obviously Geelong and uh, – Col- not Geelong, Collingwood <laughs> and Carlton. Scott Pendlebury, about to play 400 games. Never played mm. in Cadinia Park or in Tassie. He's also never played at Alice Springs, Cairns, Canberra, Ballarat or Darwin. Hashtag must be nice. <laughs> yeah, it would be <laughs> Anyway, nice. it's his game, 400th game as Collingwood host Carlton. The MCG, 730. There'll be 95,000 mm. at the G. I won't be one of them because I'll be trying to watch the Swans. Over-unders, 168.5. Carlton are two-goal favourites. Collingwood. Back into form with a win over Richmond last weekend. Carlton about to fall off the face of the earth. Offense, Collingwood, 86.3 points. They've also allowed in 86.2. Carlton, they've been scoring all year. 98 points scored and 86 let in. They're the 14th ranked defense and the second best offense. Let's get to the teams. In comes Bo McCreary, Jordan DeGoey, and Billy, the best premiership player ever, Frampton. (laughs) Harrison, Sullivan, and Parker omitted for Carlton. This is the big one. Boyd in. He's not the big one. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> I'm getting to it. Boyd. Jack Martin in. Blakers in. Harry McFive in. Yeah. Alco Cunningham with a shoulder. Cowan, Carroll, and Young all out. There's some big ins all around. Very, yeah, ins. very big. Dugowie back. McCreary. <clears throat> I think McCreary's. Bit of speed. Yeah, mm. a little bit of a sneaky in in terms of his pressure as well. A bit of a wrecking ball in that forward half. <laughs> this is going to be a good game. Mm. Oh, this is going to be great. You've also got you've got you've got the traditional rivals. You've got Pendles four hundred, so it's going to be a great celebration. This is either you can look at this one of two ways. This is Collingwood. This is their last chance to make finals. Because if they lose, they're done. Yep. You got Pendles four hundredth. Let's go back. What was it six weeks ago? Dusty's three hundredth. With a playing Hawthorne, a team that we thought, oh, but on their day they could beat. They have the early moment Dusty kick in the goal, and then the Hawks just went nah, ah, bang. Mm. Yeah. If Carlton can withstand the early onslaught and go in on level terms at quarter time, do we think they kick away or are they cooked? Because there is two ways you look at this game, that Carlton bounce back here and go, we don't care about this, or Collingwood for the occasion just go, we're back. Mm. I just think with Carlton's defense, they can never truly put away a game. And as Jim and a few of us have said, they always play that great quarter and then they just play three ordinary quarters. So I think Mm. even if it is close and they withstand that early pressure – their defense is always going to keep them like in the contest, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I think they, as we saw last week, they're always one injury away, really, aren't yeah. they, Carlton? One big yeah. injury away. But I th- I think Aker's coming in on, on the half forward line. Mm. Just he adds a little bit more for them because he just, he seems to link up well between even the half back and center blokes going forward. Yeah. He's that real good link up player. Mm. Yeah. I think he's a big in. Harry Mackay means they're not going to go everywhere for Charlie all the time. And as I said this time last year, Jack Martin is the most important player at Carlton because he can mm. play tall and take a mark, but he's got the tactical nows to get front and centre. And yep. he's, he could he's give, very good at the ground ball as well. And the way Quaynor is going at the moment, he could give him an absolute bath. And that, that's, that's what's something I think that Carlton are probably lacking to be genuine premiership contenders year yep. after year is a small forward. Like, yep. And Charlie Kerno has kicked four plus goals in his last, I think it's like four or five games. Uh, no stats mm-hmm. guys and written it down. But against Collingwood, he's got a really good record yeah. against the Pies. Carlton have also won eight of their last nine at the G. But getting mm-hmm. is getting back to the G something for them too. Yeah, so, yeah. After it, after they after Collingwood suffered heartbreak on Carlton fans a few years ago at those finals, Carlton are going to be the, wanting to do the same. The Jamie Elliott this goal in round twenty four, mm. a couple or twenty three a few years yeah, ago. Going to want to spoil yeah. the party, and I think Harry McKay is such a big in because he's the one who takes those marks high half forward on the wing. Whereas Charlie Kerner had to do that last week, and then See, he's got no one to kick long. But to. that's where I think yeah. Charlie Kerner is the one that's better up the ground and swinging it into Harry McFive. Yeah, yeah, you can just see like one step low, sixty yeah. meter dart, and Harry's just out out on the fat side, just in the hands. Mm. Yeah, and he's probably the better kick at the moment. You'd say so as well. You look at the yeah. forward lines. Carlton's forward line has got all the, all the points in them. They've got goals, mm. goals galore coming. I don't trust the Collingwood forward line to kick a big enough score yeah, to win. Yeah. This is going to have to be someone like Weeders goes down, and then. All of a sudden, I don't know, this is a Dan McStay kicking five nine. 
Yeah, mm. he, he no, normally doesn't kick bags though, damn. So That's he kicks what I mean. like two or three, yeah. yeah. He needs to kick a bag. Billy Elliott needs to. I think to... Lockie Schultz needs to lift. Oh, he's been horrendous. He really mm. needs to lift. This is like training. a Dugowie 23 and 2. Like, yeah. I'm I'm the most important player on the field game, but he's, his body looks cooked. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how he goes back, yep. but yeah, not great. Look, they're not in form at the moment, but you can't, no. can't really ever write the pies off in this traditional rivalry. It's that sort New. of game. Dacos yeah. kicked the, the winner. Um, oh, yeah. what a goal that was. That was an awesome one year, yeah. so. so that leads to the big question. If Carlton lose this, can they miss the finals? I think they can, you know. Really? Oof. Well, they got if they lose this, which I think they, they will, they got Hawthorne, which doesn't look like a... It's a 50-50 it's game It's a 50-50 now. Yeah. game. They'll beat West Coast. Yeah. But I actually think they're a chance to lose to St. Kilda in the last oh, round. Geez. I don't think so. You don't oh, think so? Not. They can't, yeah. I it's don't, Carlton, yeah. though. No, I don't like, think they can. They can't miss. Talking like, about teams possibly making finals, Gold Coast? Gold Coast, question mark? They have to win out. I think they will. I think they had to beat Brisbane last week for me. But anyway, yeah. this, that's a, not, a, not a question for this. Anyway, tips. I think Pies win by four. I, th I think they lift for Pendles and they get it done. <laughs> I don't think so. I just don't think the, the form's good enough at the moment. The, again, the forward line, it's just whether yeah. they can kick a big enough score against Carlton team that's destined to kick minimum 80 points throughout yeah. this game. I don't think they can, so I'm going to go Carlton by four goals. All right. So I'm going Carlton by a kick in a heart stopper Oof. that unfortunately I won't be able to see because at the <laughs> same time I'll be watching the Port Adelaide Power take on my beloved Sydney Swans at the Adelaide Oval. If you're at the Rising Sun Hotel in South Melbourne on Saturday night, you owe me a beer because it's my birthday. The <laughs> over-under is 169 and a half here. Port, fifth offense in the league at 86 and a half. Their defense seems very Port, ninth, 81 points. The Swans, best offense in the league, bang on 100 points. The best defense, 72 points. So you have a look. The Swans got smashed last week, still didn't mm. get blown out. Yeah, Their defense is good, is also why it's not in this, but... Tom McCartan needs to be in consideration for an All-Australian uh, kit this year because he's been the best defender in the best team, but because he's not flashy, you don't notice him. Yeah, that's mm. I think definitely squad, but I'm yeah. Un yeah, there's bigger names, isn't there, that McCartan always yeah. gets overlooked. Port Adelaide, yeah. no changes, which means Todd Marshall is not back in this squad, which is very important. For the Swans, mm. Cheeks! Cheeks! He's back! <laughs> James Robottom, friend of the show, is back! Aaron Francis is in. <laughs> Thankfully, the uh, selectors got that right, picking him this week. Yeah. Lewis Mellican out with a hamstring and Braden Campbell admitted. Still feel a tall short there, Sydney. Last mm. week's sub is Luke Parker. 100 bucks says it is uh, Samuel Wicks or Corey Warner as the sub yeah, this that's week. A good call. Luke Parker will not be the sub. What if Francis is the sub? No way. He's, you've got They've the, done that before, though. They won't play him as the sub because he will... It'll be he and McCartan as the key defenders yep. because Melican's out with the injury. So that means that... I reckon Francis goes to Dixon and McCartan goes to Georgiades. Mm. Last week, Radigalia played forward. Lizard. He's a big boy, Radigalia. Yeah, he but is a big the boy. run and jump, yeah. Lizard. Or you swing Joel Amati back there and just say, jump at the ball, Joel. Yeah, yeah look, but you, you are probably right. Though. But they also, are one tall. They are one tall short. short. So Asava is a forward. Geelong tried to figure that out. Never could. He was never a good yeah. enough forward. Then he yeah. is a defender. And now I've got one week forward. Like, oh, he's a forward. I just think no, he's no, a mid player. I don't, I don't think he's a good player. I just think when he went forward last week, it worked It worked against Carlton because they don't have the second key back, right? Yeah. Like Wiedering was tied up with Dixon. Mm. I don't know why they played Lewis Young in the forward line. Yeah, they needed to move him back uh, sooner, didn't they? Yeah. Um, so yeah. I won't be surprised if even like Logan McDonald plays at centre-half back. Actually, they did, you did that do. last week, didn't you? I, I was could calling they, for that during yeah. the game when the injury was. So I'll try and find the actual, like because they've got the squad mm. list of how they actually line them up here. But so the Swans have, haven't have beaten Port Adelaide since 2016. That's the biggest stat coming into this. We had the Ollie Florent kick after the siren last year that oh, yeah. went into the wind. Uh, I'm still getting over that. Um, <laughs> uh, here, the Swans have named, no, they've named uh, McCartan and Fox in the back line. Francis is on the bench, but you expect that Fran Logan McDonald also on the bench, so I wouldn't be shocked if Logan McDonald does line up at centre-half back with that. Mm. Yep. Uh, I forgot to mention, Porter half-point favourites because the market's like, uh, Sydney, what are you doing? Yeah, mm. and it's at, um, at Adelaide Oval. Swans have won their last three there. Yeah. Yeah. Swans, the Swans have lost four of their last five. Yep. And look, they only scored 48 points last week against the Dogs. But the Dogs are one of the form teams of the competition. But look, it's a bit worrying mm. when everyone's sort of questioned at the start of the season their tall forward line and yep. whether they can back it up. They're still the best offense I, in the comp. <laughs> they, yeah. they still are. But I think they're, they're, they're bolstered by scores of like 110 against Gold Coast at home, 138 against North at home. 
Yeah, but boy. you look at that, but it's the, the so yeah, but you have a look. I think that's the first last week was the first game the Swans have failed to score 90 points at home all season. Mm. Yeah. So their score, it's consistent points. It's not like they've got 180 in there like they had a couple of years ago with the West Coast score. It's yep. consistently good scoring. Like when they lost to Freo, it was 98 to 99. So they're still yeah, scoring yeah. high. And that's the I think that's the highest that in the Essendon game, the two highest scores they've led in all year. So their defense is really good. It's the midfield that needs to lift. It's the de- the delivery into the forward line last week was disgusting. Mm. Yeah, like, Joel Amati takes a mark, rocks back, takes ten seconds. Oh, what am I going to do? Pops it up, kicks it straight down Tim English's throat. It was the worst inside fifty I've seen ever. Mm. I think I think the only thing with the Swans is I think if you're not getting six or seven goals from the midfield like you normally do every week for the first half three quarters of the season from from Heaney Warner, um, Golden Golden even. Look, then you look into the forward line as whether they can deliver, and I think they can because I'm not very this Port keen Adelaide on defense Port Adelaide isn't great. Tall, tall defense. Mm. Like so. Zer- like you're looking at it, Zerk Thatcher back there. The Swans have towed up Essendon in recent years, so that's not really a worry there. Yep. And then you have a look at the sort of smaller fleet. You're like, okay, if Luke Parker goes forward, he plays taller than than his height. Will Haywood is having a really good season. Hayden McLean can pop up and have a game. Yeah. Joel Amati loves the Adelaide Oval. So. Mm. It's really just a leer, isn't it, as the sort of the main defender you have to get past? Because yeah. I know Kerno kicked three last week, but I think two were from Freeze that yeah. were 50 50. So, so Alia was actually pretty and strong. And the Swans know what a leer really is all yeah. about being a former Swan. True, actually. Yeah. I forgot and about that. If you're the Swans, so they haven't pulled out the tag in a while. I know we're spending a bit on this game, but this is first versus equal fourth. So it is a yeah, pretty yeah. big game. Do you send uh, Taylor Adams to Zach Butters at the first bounce? Oh, Ooh. I'd send Robottom on him. Our man Cheeks. Yeah, yep. Cheeks. That's so in Cheeks. Cheeks. And then does James Jordan tag? Dan Houston. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty this, yeah. I think this one's also, they've tried. They've mixed it up. It was paralysis by analysis. They tried too many different things like, we've nailed this, and they got it completely wrong. Tag Dan Houston, stop your run. Tag Zach Butters and annoy him. Because if Zach mm, Butters yeah. isn't firing and just let Heaney or Warner and Horn Francis run head, head to head, that'd be great. Mm. And Heaney and Rosie, let's go. Warner Horn. and Horn Francis would be Who, who wins awesome in a race? Though. Warner. Warner would be. Horn, Horn Francis, Francis is un... Like it's deceivingly quick. Yeah, but, Warner, but I think Warner just Warner in the first Warner's ten meters zippy. puts a gap. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then you've got Grundy up against Sweet in the ruck. That should be fun. Well, so this I, is a fascinating. I think Logan game. McDonald very has to play in the forward line. I don't think you can float him back because otherwise you just get a Lear Lear floating and taking intercepts. So do you have a or could you have a Marty play a defensive? I don't. I, don't I think, think so. Role. I think you got to play. I think both it, it depends. No, I mean, where I mean, Marty a Marty a defensive role on a Lear on a Lear because they they are both extremely athletic and can jump. They and then who's on Cirque Thatcher? Hayden McLean, McDonald. Yeah. I think it actually depends how Port's forward set up and yeah. where the Radical is there. I know he's not a threat, but he is a big body. Yeah. I know. I'm because not a, oh, he's not a threat because... Harry Cunningham goes to Willie Rioli. That's mm. set on. Radical has got one of the worst ball drops, I think, in the competition. So I'm not yeah. ever worried about yeah, him in front but of Bell. It's you a don't fascinating want him to take marks. You All know things mean. being equal, the Swans win this, right? I think oh, so. I think so. Just about. Because um, were Port good last week or were Carlton terrible? I, I don't. I didn't read too much into I that. Think, I, thought I think both, it was a mix. I okay. thought both went impressive. So I'm the Swans bouncing back into form. If they don't win this, I'm writing them off completely for the yeah. season. Mm. Like I'm, they can't win the flag if they lose this. Well, I wouldn't go that Ooh. far. Nah. There's no genuine content, like, the, other than Sydney, who the, have been the top all year. We've seen, if all teams play their best footy, the Swans are going to win the grand final by six goals. Yeah. Mm. If they don't, probably the Dogs or Brisbane. Yeah. yeah, look, uh, look. I think Sydney win this by sixteen points. Yep. It is a must win. I don't know if it's they can't win the flag if they lose, but I would be very worried. I think about they them. just need. Mm. They also just need a win just to bounce back because next week is Collingwood at the SCG, and then it's Essendon, Essendon yeah. at Marvel and Adelaide to finish off. They need this game because that that will allow them the luxury of dropping one of the final three because they'll just still finish case, first. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, too much Swans talk. I know, I'm sorry. I am a Swans fan, but that was too much. <laughs> Sunday, 110 at Monica Oval, Canberra, GWS Giants, minus three and a half. Take on Hawk Ball, over under 169 and a half. This is a great game. Yeah. 90 points on offense for the Giants, 80 on defense. Hawthorne, bang on 84, 80 points in defense. GWS's record at Marvel is three and eight since 2021, but I think they've won their last three. Yep. Hawthorne have won 10 of their last 12. So we were laughing last year, in the middle of last year, GWS, stop playing in Canberra. Now they're winning. I remember them running 
uh, open Brisbane like there was no tomorrow earlier in the season. I believe that was Anzac Day. It was awesome. GWS ins. Grizu- these are extended benches. Uh, Grzuski, Stone, Keefe, and Angwin. Jake Riccardi's injured. He's been playing terribly. Uh, for Hawks, in come McKenzie, Sarong, Morrison, Gunston, and Finn McGuinness has been dropped, which yep. seems weird against the Tsunami. Yeah, interesting. Mm. He was playing as the sub, so maybe they just didn't see a role for him this week. I think there's there's some great games this round. Yeah, this, this being is one, one of you're them. the Hawk man. Take us through it. Yeah, look, I, I think this will be a very open game. Both teams love to run and carry. A lot of excitement on both sides of the ball. Could we have a high scoring game if we get it? If we don't get a terrible Canberra day? Yeah, are, think, we, are think, we clearing this over under with absolute ease at one sixty? If the weather's good, I think we're clearing the over under. Like this could be a cold, crisp day, but it's like seven degrees, but the sun's out, yep. and we're just flinging the footy either end. Fourteen yeah. degrees, no rain. Yeah, oh, like I reckon. I reckon it'll just hit the over. I don't know if it'll be like a complete high-scoring game because both defenses have lifted in recent times. I know they're both in the top eight for for defense, hey, but GWS hmm. didn't name Sam Taylor. Yeah, he's full back. Oh, they yeah, did. He played, he played last week. Oh, I yeah, just yeah. had a stroke. I'm like, Hold <laughs> I, on. I wish they didn't. They uh, said he was back with, with, the, uh, with, the, with the gelled undies. Yeah, he might, he might have worn them on uh Oh, on so that's why, yeah, okay, yeah. that's why I've mm. seen it. I didn't watch GWS last week. Yeah, <laughs> I really wish he wasn't back because um, he's an awesome player. But, yeah, it's going to be fascinating this game. Yeah, look, I think the Hawks got a little bit of an added bonus with Kelly and Cornelio just not being fit enough to play in this oh, game. Oh, true. I didn't but even But this is the thing that we've said about GWS. When everyone's in... Too many dudes. Too many dudes. Too many dudes. Well, mm-hmm. it was when they had Taranto and Hopper, right? Too many dudes. Yeah. But look, I think we, I'd rather. I, I love them both, but I think Cornelio went would be if they had Cornelio in, I'd be like absolute certain he's can't lose because mm. I think he adds a bit more in the midfield, whereas Kelly's a bit in and out yeah. with where he plays as well. I think so. But you look at this midfield that's listed here. Yep. it's not really inspiring. Tom Green. He's awesome. Finn Callahan, Toby Bedford. Bedford, Bedford will go to Will Dave. Bedford's tag yeah. Will Dave. Finn Callahan had Callahan, footy on a string last yeah. week. And uh, don't underestimate uh, James Peatling, who we just yeah. talked about yeah. in the wrap-up show. He was yeah. awesome last week, playing as a centre bounce mid, so yeah. expect big things. We also forgot to mention the handsome off in the midfield of Port and Sydney of Connor Oze and Isaac Heaney. Oh, That's I, think, a good, I think Heaney that's clears a good him handsome easily. Off. Yeah, we've got Will Day up against uh, Finn Callahan here in the handsome off too. Oh, Callahan, <laughs> Callahan kills a, Will Day. This is a good handsome off. <laughs> what a great game. we got handsome dudes. We've got great footy. Uh, and no crowd. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's going to win the battle of the high half forwards? I assume you're at this level. I put this in because I feel like both teams just sort of have those zippy little guys that just get up the ground and mm. work back hard. For GWS, you've got Brett Daniels, Toby Bedford. Uh, Harvey Thomas yep. has been awesome. And then Hawthorne, you've got Dylan Moore, Ginevan, Connor McDonald. These guys are like the the nucle- nucleus of their game plan. So mm-hmm. just want to see who wins that battle. Mm. How you feeling as a Hawks fan? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit nervous on this one. I think Giants, I think this is the one we drop. They're, they've Have you hit, ever been to uh, – I Kendra? think we played them in the, the snow game. Remember oh, remember that one? Too, yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I think – this is the game we dropped. Giants are hitting form. Uh, I think when they hit form, they're going to be a top four, top six team, and I don't think we're at that level yet. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah, look, I tend to agree. Um, if this was in down in Melbourne or even in Tassie, I'd slide towards Hawthorne. But I'll go GBS um, with a home ground advantage by 20-odd points. This was the game, the dodgy downfield late free kick that won the game for Oh, Hawthorne. that wasn't dodgy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> are you kidding me? It was late. It wasn't a free kick. It, the he was literal the, definition he of downfield. He was in the field. action as he was kicking. It wasn't a free kick. Was, so, well, <laughs> even could, if it is a free kick, not downfield. Bring yeah. it no, but it was after disposal. It's bring literally it. the definition of downfield. The umpires change that every week. So, so bring I, it back. If they brought it back, Sicily would have yeah. kicked it for the Revenge game! <laughs> the tsunami is engaged as the Giants win by two goals. Two goals? I'll take it. Two goals? I think Giants by three goals. Yep. All right, let's get... Actually, actually, quickly. Yeah. Say if they say if Hawthorne win this, right? Would that loss against Port Adelaide by a point? It's cost them top four. Would that cost them top four? Well, even that that could cost them yeah. a final spot. Uh, you sure. say that, this it's easier I, to say in hindsight. I wouldn't have lost our first five, to be honest. Like it, everyone's yeah, like yeah. last year with Adelaide. I'm more don't lose close games. I'm don't more actually five. annoyed at the Collingwood loss than the Port loss. Well, I'm annoyed at the Port loss that where we would lost by five points. And I can't remember that. Connor either. McDonald had a running set shot at goal at Gather Round to get us. Oh, that's right. Oh, that was on the hill. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. The thing with the Port loss is. It's easy to say this in hindsight, but if we had won that, I don't know if we would treat the f- the, f- the weeks after that with the same intent and the same willingness to attack. We after that game, we were like, 
fourth mm-hmm. quarter, we got to keep attacking. Yeah. And there's been games where teams have come back and we've gone, no crap, like we've got to Again, we've keep Freo going and here. GWS, they could have easily flipped as well. So. Yeah. Look, percentage is going to be crucial. So as long as they don't get smashed. Last two get weeks smashed? have been been good for percentage. Don't get hammered. Yeah. Don't have a repeat of the yep. Geelong game. All right. Yes. I know why Marcus was avoiding it because the next game is at the MCG, 3.20 p.m. Oh. As the Essendon Bomb Rays take on Flag Mantle. Minus nine and a half for Flag Mantle. Let's just get to the ins and outs quickly. In come Kelly, Hobbs, Brian, Davy Jr., Roberts. Out go Ridley with a hip. Archie Perkins has been dropped. For Freo, Nat Fife has been dropped through suspension. Remember, extended benches. Erasmus comes in. Fremantle fans have been calling for this. Yep. Uh, as long, uh, Along with Aridi, Simpson, and Will Brody. Uh, what did I say? The offense here for Essendon, 83 points. They allow in about 88. Freo have kicking 87, and they're the second best defense in the comp. Bang on 74. Freo have won their last two meetings by over 40 points. They're four and two of the last three years of the MCG. This is great. Marcus, you're the Essendon fan. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Uh, well, this just sums up how I'm feeling. This is oh. this is this is terrible. What's, he's ripped what is he it. Doing? We gotta rip the shirt. Oh, is if he, he can't do it, that's oh. even funny. Oh, oh. so not Don that's the sash. Rip the sash. Rip the sash. Rip the sash. He's given up. That's how I feel as a Don's fan. He's just wow. ripped up the Mark like, Taylor Fujitsu. I feel airline. like all the <laughs> Essendon players that played last week should offer refunds from their salary to the <laughs> member going fans that went to that game. Did you go? Uh, no, I was away. <laughs> but no, I was away. Sorry. I remember, but I was away for but the long weekend. He's torn the jumper. Jake has torn the he's jumper. Torn I've the had jumper. enough. I've had enough, Leo. <laughs> so take us through last week. I know, like, we joke on the show about Essendon, but you're an Essendon fan, so you're living it. Yeah, it's it's so. I'm surprised there's only two changes here. Um, I would have liked to have seen a lot more. Uh, only one missing, force change. Only yeah. one force change. And it's Archie Perkins. Yeah, and he was the sub. Like, it's mm. not like it's Dyson Heppel, Stringer, two meter Peter. Yeah, yeah, who, who is on the extended bench? You got Peter Wright there. Heppel is on the bench as well. Mm. They could come out, but yeah, Look, hopefully think, a few more than two changes. I think I think I wouldn't. Oh, yeah, I think Menzi would be dropped as well. Oh yeah, I he think was would very go. poor. Yeah, Peter Wright's definitely a chance as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Draper Brian uh, Rutt combo. Yeah, it's got to happen. And I. Th- I think Alan David Jr. has got to play for a bit of forward pressure because yeah. it's been absolutely non How come he can't get a game and how come Sardis can't get a game? Yeah, Sardis, Sardis not even in. Hobbs Sardis, in I can first. imagine. I can't wait till Sardis he's made a lot of, at the end of the he, year. He's made a lot of mistakes in the ones when, he's, he, when he's played. A, yeah, at least he's trying. I, I get that, but we've got players like Hobbs who's obviously come in as well. we just got too many... Too many dudes. There, there are dudes. too many dudes, aren't there? Like in the midfield. And then we're either, Sardis, we're either way too tall, way too small. Sardis yeah. should just move, go to West Coast. He can, he and no, Harley Why would he go to West Coast for? Because he, he can play alongside Harley Reid. It's going to be awesome. I would Even like to see Archie Roberts give, give him a go. In the yeah. VFL, he's been killing it all year. Yep. He's, he's getting like 30 and a goal yes. every game. I was at uh, Essendon's VFL game last week, and he was very impressive in the wet. Just always gives it a go. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he does. Answer the big question. Will this result be a part of the Brad Scott process? I just put that in because I thought it was funny. Oh, this, you know, the big question is, Freya the real deal or Essendon frauds? Yes. <laughs> yes to both. Yes and yes. <laughs> because this this result, if Fremantle will come across and win, they win at the MCG. They beat Essendon in a game that Essendon absolutely must win because if this is the game that if Essendon lose, I think they're absolutely cooked. Because who have you got next week? The Bombers? Uh, we got Gold Coast. So Gold at Coast home, next week. At, at home. home. But that's what I mean. Like, yeah. You, you, you're probably going to win that. Then you've got the Swans. Yeah, the, mm. and then Brisbane. And Yeah, so you probably yeah. you need to win this game to at least give yourself a chance because then at least if you drop the Sydney game, okay, and if you drop the Brisbane game, you still might be alive. But if you drop this, you're probably only starting favourite against Gold Coast. I think um, we, we said the same last week, though, that they had to win against the Saints. And I'm not even looking ahead yeah, you to can't. the finals. You no. can't. I just want to see – I just want to see us – you know, put it up to Freeman. Are you going to run a tag Make on a game Caleb this... Sorong or Brayshaw? You don't tag, though. No, That's what I mean. Or Sam Durham tag Bontempelli at the beginning of the I year. I do like Durham. Um, Durham and Caldwell I think you awesome. need Durham's burst from the stoppage and sort of mm, brute toughness, nature yeah. in that midfield. Uh, so I don't think we'll tag, <clears> um, <throat> which I don't hate either. Um, but, yeah, I just want to see a game. I don't want to see a blowout. I don't want it like last year when we got smashed against Collingwood, thumped against GBS. Yeah, that GWS game was wild. Mm. We just need a, you know... Show something. Yeah, a bit Show of fight. Yeah. yeah, and take some momentum into into next year, which hopefully will be better. Next year, you mean September? Yeah, that's my tips. <laughs> tips. Essendon win by nine points. I yeah. reckon this is the game they just 
Frio, just drop it. Why not? <laughs> <What are you laughs> <doing? laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I just think I just have a feeling. Just, you know when you have a feeling when you're tipping and you just like you gotta follow it. I've seen this. I've seen this. You got a vibe. I've, I've got seen a vibe. this. This is this is pure vibe. This is a vibe. I've seen this club for many, many, many <laughs> years, yep. and I give us a very slim chance. I don't know how we're three men or nine point favourites because I think Frio win this by. Five goals. Yeah. I've literally written Freo by five goals. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Final game of the weekend, Marvel Stadium 440. So that's great. you got a game kicking off of the MCG at 320 and one at Marvel at 440. Great stuff, AFL. That's awesome. St. Kilda host Brisbane, who are only 10.5 point favourites. Over unders 166.5. Mm. Given last week, this could fly over. Yep. St. Kilda's offense is 70, 75 points. The defense is 74.7. Brisbane, third best defense, uh, third best offense in the comp, sorry, 93.5, and fifth best defense at 78 points. Brisbane have won the last eight games they've played in this year, and they've won their last five against the Saints. Importantly, St. Kilda hit 100 last time these two teams played at the Gabba earlier they this did. year. They that, did. That's That game me. was weird. Mm, yeah, that was very weird. Uh, ins and outs for this game, of course, extended benches. Harris Andrews in, comes as well as Madden, Fort, and Brucey Revel. Connor Brooks. McKenna's been dropped. In come. Oh, some nice ins here for St. Kilda. The poo is in. Nice. Paddy Dow, Campbell, and McLennan. Now goes Hunter Clark, who's injured, but the poo is a big Yeah, that's in. a good in. Mm. Like this is a good game. Good game to finish off the round, which is weird yeah. saying this about St. Kilda. Uh, yeah, they've hit, they've hit a bit of form. Um, I think their defense will keep them in it, like it always does. Just be enough whether or not their offense will have enough for the Lions. Yeah, mm. yeah Brisbane have got a good recent record. They won the last five. They've got a good record at Marvel as well. Yep. So Apart from the Hawks game this yeah. year, they lost. But that's yeah. one, like yeah. other than that. So Brisbane coming off a Q-Clash win, are we – are we expecting them just to keep winning or is there going to be a blip at some point where they do have to mm. drop something because they got up for the Swans game, they got up for the Q-Clash. Maybe this is that random one they drop before yeah. they go bang, bang, bang because they got two more games at the Gabba, I think. Yeah, I think I'm leaning that way. I think there might be a little blip in the radar just before finals. And Yeah. Yeah, I think the Saints, sneaky chance here. Yeah, and this and this game, like if, if Brisbane win this one, I'll lose this one, sorry. It just, the machinations on the ladder are absolutely fascinating because mm. you've got a bunch of teams, well, you've got Freo and Brisbane on 12, 6, and 1, and then you've got uh, four teams on 12 and 7. Yeah. Obviously, they're not all going to be there because Port Adelaide play the Swans, so Brisbane could either be first or they could somehow be down towards fifth yeah. by the end of the weekend. So there is a lot happening this here. There's a big queue in for Brisbane spot, isn't there? That's it. So this is like, if Fremantle win this, like we expect Fremantle to, they could jump up into second quite clearly. So Brisbane, again, it sounds silly, there's so many games, but this is another must win for Brisbane, just mm. to bank it to stay second because if they have to travel the first week of the finals, the wheels could fall off. Yeah, true. Yeah, look, I, th I think they're a lock to, to make the top four. I, I yeah. don't really see them having a blip in the road. And although St Kilda, look, they they were good, but how much was that Saints being great and Essendon just being yeah. absolutely terrible? If results go Hawthorne's way, they could be fourth at the end of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing it out there. <laughs> but I think Brisbane uh, win this, and I think, yeah, four or five goals in, in a sort of semi-low scoring affair. I'm waiting for Ross just to, you know, see these clamps, these clamps that I use every goddamn day of my goddamn life. It's in Kilda by four points. I like Ooh. it. I've gone Saints by 11. I think, yeah, I, I just like Weird their, vibes. Their, Weird vibes. Weird yeah. vibes. Last week they had a good spread of goal kickers, and I reckon Cooper Sharma might back it up with a with a Cooper, I am Nick Rewalt reincarnated Sharma. Oh, no, you've got Harris Andrews there. coming back. And you've got uh, Mateus, yeah, but, yeah, Lenny got Hayes, Philippou. Yeah, Len Lenny Hayes, Lee Montagna, yeah. Robert Harvey. And Brent, yeah. Brendan Goddard. Yeah. Philippou. <laughs> This is going to be great. So the, the big question of this is, can the Saints back it up? Because if they played the football they did last week and the way that they played against the Swans... Every chance. Great. If they play yeah, the way they did against Adelaide, they'll get beaten by 100 points. Yeah, that's fair. I've actually forgot about that Adelaide But their defense... Yep. Like, St Kilda's defense is frustratingly good. It is. Because it's, Callum Wilkie's just yeah. there just clunk. When you go nah. up against him, you're just like, oh, I just want to like, one one. stop yeah, kicking like, it in the air near them because him and mm. Dougal Howard take intercepts. Yeah. It's not that hard. And they know how to play Marvel with their with their defense yeah. as well. So. They'll they'll clog mm. up like they'll run a tag on Zorka for sure, and they'll clog yeah. they'll clog up the corridor. Because watch what they did mm. against the Swans. They just they'll leave a little chip kick 15 meters in front of them, but they'll clog up the space. Yeah, yep. absolutely. God. I'm they're just... also they're also smart enough to stop the chip kick as well, which is what they did to the Dons last week. And they yeah. did that so to the Swans. They can be very well drilled. So you're tipping Brisbane? Yep. All right, big calls for the weekend ahead, Leo. Josh Tracy kicks five against the Bombers off a fresh contract. 
Signed till 2030. I just think he'll tear up Ben Mackay, Sunday Arvo, and yeah, he's a big, strong unit, and I reckon he's a, he's a good kick for goal too, so I reckon he'll, he'll slot five. Why not? Mm. Marcus. I'm going another goal kicker here, and I said West Coast were going to be Gold Coast, and it's going to be the back of Jake Waterman kicking six, six. majors. On uh, uh, Sam Collins? What's happening? Hmm. It's happening. Cool. Our man Cheeks keeps Zach Butters to 15 disposals. 15. Ooh. Now that is a big call. Cheeks, Cheeks. Get it done, Cheeks. He might have 15 in the first quarter. <laughs> well, what if he goes to Rosie? <laughs> man, I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm then I'm relying on Taylor Adams. <laughs> Keep an eye on. We've got the tsunami up against the hawk ball. That mm. game's going to be awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. Uh, also, keep an eye on whatever the bloody hell Essendon do because who knows? It's one of those things. It's like a car crash when you see it coming. Yeah. You're just watching it because you're morbidly fascinated yeah, by it. Yeah, no, literally. Yeah, it's no, a pretty, no, I pretty good uh, comparison. No. The cracks at Carlton. Can they overcome Collingwood in such a big occasion? 95,000 at the G. Keep an eye on just the Swans and Port. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've talked it out. And importantly, this is the big one because if there's some blowouts this weekend, keep an eye on the ladder and the live percentage changes yes. throughout the weekend. So for teams sort of like Footscray, we call them the Western Bulldogs. They have Footscray this weekend. Stats go, you're stuffed up. <laughs> you think for uh, Footscray, Brisbane, and Sydney, they're good. Yep, mm. yep. Swans 136. Even Frio, right? Uh, Swans 136, Brisbane 120, Frio 117, but then it's Carlton 112, 112.9, uh, 111.6 for GWS, 109.1 for Geelong, Port Adelaide in danger 106.7, Footscray basically 120, Hockball 104, the mm. Bomb Rays. Mm. 95. I think I read a stat somewhere. So this if Port Adelaide get beaten 80 to 30, that's bad. That is very bad. Yeah. I think 14, first time 14 teams have a percentage above 100. Really? At this point yeah, in the season. Because Adelaide and Saints do. Yeah. Don't they? They've yeah. Got Somehow Coast do, Adelaide Collingwood are still do, above. Melbourne do. So there's, there's four teams. How do Melbourne have it? That's crazy. Mm. So there's four teams. Essendon, West Coast, North Melbourne, Richmond. That feels about right. Yeah. Supercoach vibes, thoughts, processes. Leo, you're, you've coming off about 26 million points last week. What are you doing? Yeah, so I'm going to – I think I'm copying Marcus oh, and me. vice-captaining Flanders and captaining Sheasel against Richmond. No trades. I've got the one one trade left. Two boosts still in my locker. <laughs> oh, but uh, come like, on, Andy. one trade left, and I'm just going to save it until there's like a big injury or something. Yeah. Yeah. Marcus, mm. you're the resident draft king. Yeah, well, look, well, are we talking about trades in or, or just what are you doing? Draft wise, look, uh, I can't really make too many changes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna gamble on Ollie Dempsey you know, in the four line for a that's draft. A big gamble. Draft. I, I gambled on him last week. Provided the goods, scored 108 with a 74 average. Yep. So I'll look to do the same in in, in draft, but classic, same, same as Leo. So nice. I am going a vice captain of the cheese ball. Nice. Into the captain of Caleb Sarong because Essendon don't run a tag. Yeah, mm. I love that. So, and I'm probably going to, yeah, so I'm, I've got loopholes all over the joint. I may, there could be a late change to someone like Tristan Cherry um, up against Nank. Well, maybe not that. Maybe, maybe Grundy up against Sweet could be a, could be a play that I'm looking at here. Mm. So, mm. a lot of, a lot of fascinating stuff going on this weekend because, well, that'll do it here for AFL today. We'll, we'll be back on Sunday. Uh, I'll be back. Leo, you? No. Uh, potentially. Potentially. Marcus, I don't know. One if, of Marcus and I will be yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, stats go. I honestly don't know when Jim's coming back. Yeah. We probably should have got an email about probably. that. Probably. Because <laughs> I've been in charge and I've been running around like a stressed idiot. We don't know what day it is. I've heard you've been a big stress head. Mate, you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> you need on. a stress ball. I do. Just grab the footy. Just Isaac, Isaac King. King's head. <laughs> just rub it. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow I do I'm, not think that I'm about, as well. I'm about, to, I'm about to go to uh, Winston Churchill Steakhouse for dinner. So oh, I'm really looking forward Can to Can I get a steak review? Oh, it'll get a steak review. Yeah, it's, nice. it's the number two ranked steakhouse in Australia. Oh, yeah. AD, AD's food review. AD, yeah. Where's it's the channel AD. coming in? Yeah, oh, don't worry. Uh, AD today. Yeah, AD today. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks to you, Leo. Thanks to you, Marcus. Thank you. Remember to make sure to smash a like across AFL Today, Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia. Go to punters.com.au because hot or tickets still on hiatus. We did drop a couple of punters previews today if you're into your horsey stuff. So a couple of bets there at Rose Hill and Flemington this weekend. Like and subscribe on YouTube, please. Get around Facebook, which is Sports Today Show. Instagram, AFL Today AU. TikTok, AFL Today on you. Also, AFLW season is coming up. So check out AFLW Today across Whoa. all of those social nice. platforms. Cheeky plug. We have some fun stuff coming your way in the next couple of weeks. The shows are locked and loaded. I'm not going to tell you what Special you do. Special co-host. Other well. than stats guys having a kick with his hero on Monday.
Me? No, not no. you. You're not. He's not. You're not his hero. I don't know who his hero is. Actually, I, <laughs> I do know. Who, <laughs> I know exactly who his hero is. You can't wait to see that because I'm excited for it. Anyway, get around him like I don't know. Kane corns and a really bad take. I think nah, be he's been all right this year. But yeah, he said for Hawthorne to lean into the head high tackles this week. Yeah, why not? That's not a great take. <laughs> anyway, that'll do. Shout out to Gerald behind the camera. We'll catch you later this week for more AFL today. Till then, look after yourselves. And remember, footy's back! If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.